Welcome to Cardiac Delusions. Let's see our code today. The most common cause of VT is acute MI. Is that true or false? Our patient is a 51 year old male who presented to the ER by palpitation of 20 minutes duration. His ECG on the monitor show evidence of regular Y complex tachycardia suggestive of ventricular tachycardia so a synchronized GC shock was given to the patient after sedation. So the patient restored sinus rhythm and he mentions that he has history of MI two years ago for which he had coronary stenting on the same day and so the decision was to go for immediate coronary angiography for this patient. Coronary angiography was performed showing patent stent in proximal LED with no other significant lesions. ECG after cardioversion showed evidence of sinus rhythm with pathological Q waves and residual ST elevation in precordial leads, which was similar to his previous old ECGs. An echocardiography was done showing evidence of severe LV systolic dysfunction with akinetic thinned out epical segments. So, Mostly, the patient's events that occurred two years ago was anterior STEMI with residual LV dysfunction, and the LD territory is mostly scarred in the echo. Serum troponin was certainly normal, and the patient denies any chest pain. So this patient did not have acute MI, so why did he have VT? We define VT as presence of three or more consecutive ventricular ectopics at a rate exceeding 100 beat per minute. So we consider ventricular triplet as the shortest run of VT. We have non-sustained VT, which resolves spontaneously in less than 30 seconds. So no need for DC shocks in this case. Or sustained VT, in which the VT is persistent for more than 30 seconds. So mostly it would need to be terminated by DC shock. We can classify ventricular tachycardia according to mechanism into re-entrant circuits, triggered activity which can include early after depolarization or delayed after depolarization, or abnormal automaticity due to an abnormally automatic focus in the ventricular muscle fibers, and we can classify it according to the complex morphology can be monomorphic VT which show regular and similar complex morphology or polymorphic VT in which there is irregular and variable complex morphology. So if we want to mention the causes of VT we have scar related VT which occurs in patients with pre-existing structural heart disease, acute MI which is a famous cause of VT, channelopathies like Progada syndrome or long QT syndrome, the rocks in toxicity, fascicular VT occurring in structurally normal heart, bundle branch re-entrant VT which is famous in myopathic patients, brady dependent VT, and if all these causes are excluded we classify it as idiopathic VT. What are the most two common causes of VT? We have scar related VT and acute MI. An acute MI resulting from the temporary cessation of blood flow to a region of the myocardium, it can result in abnormal automaticity or triggered activity which can result in ventricular tachycardia and sometimes it is the initial presentation of the patient. In this case it can be monomorphic VT or sometimes polymorphic VT or it may sometimes degenerate into VF resulting in sudden cardiac death even before the patient arrives at ER or before entering the catheterization procedure. We have two types of pathological process that may occur here in acute MI. The first type is ischemic injury in which there is a blood clot interrupting the blood flow to a region of a myocardium and after restoration of blood flow via angioplasty or via thrombolytic therapy, the restoration and reactive hyperemia can result in reperfusion injury. So we need to remind ourselves that post types can result in VT during MI and so reperfusion injury can result in chest pain and can result in reperfusion arrhythmias. The most common is sinus bradycardia or IVAR which is the most specific type but VT may occur during the reperfusion phase.
So MI is one of the reversible causes of VT. That's why we should perform an ECG after cardioverting the patient, as sometimes it may show evidence of ST elevation, and so we can go directly for primary PCI or thrombolytic therapy if we don't have available cath lab. If the ECG after cardioversion is normal, so we admit the patient to the CCU and follow up ECG and cardiac markers because sometimes the patient may have non STEMI, and so it is not evident in the ECG. If MI is detected either STEMI or non-STEMI coronary revascularization plus minus IV amiodarone are the cornerstone of treatment and ICD has no role in this case because the cause is corrected just we need to perform coronary revascularization. So can we conclude that acute MI is the most common cause of VT? Unfortunately no. Scar related VT is the most common type of VT even more common than the reversible cause of acute MI and it can occur in a structural heart disease characterized by presence of scar tissue inside the ventricular muscles as here the re-entrant circuit is around the scar tissue. The most common type of structural heart disease causing VT is ischemic LV dysfunction but it is not the only one. We have dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or arismogenic RV cardiomyopathy. Scar-related VT is usually monomorphic or sometimes bleomorphic, showing more than one morphology, but not polymorphic as in the previous example. But it may degenerate also into VF, resulting in sudden cardiac death if not resuscitated. That's why structural heart disease are associated with higher rate of sudden cardiac death. So we can consider scar-related VT as an irreversible cause of VT. Here, serial ECG and cardiac biomarkers will be static, so there are no dynamic ECG changes or rise or fall in cardiac biomarkers when we follow up this patient in the CCU. The baseline ECG after cardioversion can show resting ECG abnormalities caused by the underlying structural heart diseases like left bundle branch block, interventricular conduction delay, pathological Q waves according to the affected territory, or voltage criteria of left ventricular hypertrophy. So these ECG features can suggest what is the underlying structural heart disease. Echocardiography is a cornerstone in this case and sometimes we may need cardiac MRI to assess the presence and the degree of structural heart disease, especially in a specific condition, for example, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or arismogenic RV cardiomyopathy to the degree that sometimes we may need gadolinium to assess lead gadolinium enhancements. ICD would be essential in this case due to the possibility of VT recurrence, so we need ICD to terminate the VT episodes by ETB or cardioversion or terminate the VF episode by defibrillation. And sometimes we may need VT ablation using 3D electroanatomical mapping in order to reduce the recurrence of VT in case of VT storm because in this case we cannot put an ICD while the patient is in electrical storm. So why did our patient have VT? He was having scar related VT due to ischemic LV systolic dysfunction as he had a history of anterior STEMI and most probably there was a delay in revascularization so he had severe LV systolic dysfunction with akinetic thinned out segments with formation of scar tissue resulting in re-entrant VT. It was not caused by new acute MI. So the most common VT is not acute MI. The most common is a scar related VT and so there is no need to rush to the cath lab immediately after cardioversion except if there is evidence of ischemia like ST elevation or dynamic change in the ECG or there is detectable rise or fall of cardiac biomarkers in this case we need to arrange for urgent coronary angiography otherwise it is scar related VT and we need to think of the possibility of needing ICD or antiarrhythmic medication Thank you very much for watching this video and wait next week for the next delusion.